Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the PT and the INR laboratory results. So these are tests that we can conduct on our patient. These are blood tests, so you will have to draw a bit of blood from them and then send that off to lab. The reason that we do these, it could be a couple things. It could be because they're on warfarin, which is an anticoagulant medication, and we want to monitor the therapy of that, see how it's going. It could be because we need to diagnose a liver problem, so doctor suspects there might be something going on so they can use this as diagnostic data. Or maybe they're about to have surgery, and so sometimes doctor wants to see, you know, what's the blood's ability to clot prior to surgery because they are at risk. Maybe they're at risk for bleeding too much during the surgery. And the point of this test, really, what it shows us, the PT, is how fast the blood clots. That's what it's all about. So the PT stands for prothrombin time. Prothrombin, if you remember back from a and is a protein produced by the liver, and it's one of several clotting factors we have in our body. So the way this test works is it evaluates the extrinsic coagulation system, specifically factors 5, 7, 10, prothrombin, and fibrinogen. The normal range, so the normal value you will see on a patient who is not on any sort of medication, is 10 to 14 seconds. So it should take 10 to 14 seconds for your blood to clot. If you are on warfarin, it will take one to two and a half times this normal. So it takes longer to clot because you're on that anticoagulant. Things that could potentially alter the results of the PT, if your patient is on antihistamines, steroids, certain antibiotics, and digoxin. So this is prothrombin time. This is the PT part of the PT INR. Now let's talk about INR. Now let's talk about the INR. So let's first start off with what does that stand for? It means international normalized ratio. The purpose of this is to evaluate the effectiveness of oral anticoagulant therapy aka warfarin therapy. So we use this a lot on patients who are on warfarin. If you were to do this on somebody who wasn't, the normal value would be 1.1, but if they are on warfarin, it'll be two to three. So we expect it to be a little bit longer because of that anticoagulant medication. How often is this done is kind of dependent on the individual. So minimal, it'll be done once a month, and some people actually have to get this done twice a week. So it really depends on how you're doing overall with this warfarin therapy. And a lot of times if you were like newly prescribed this, this is a new medication for you, they're trying to figure out like what's the appropriate dose and level, you'll probably get this done more frequently, at least in the beginning. What could these altered levels mean? So if somebody has an increased level, so it's taking longer than normal, this be could be because of DIC, cirrhosis, hepatitis, of course, the medication, or they could have a vitamin K deficiency. So what's gonna happen if it's any of these things? The first is you're gonna call the doctor with the abnormal result. They may ask you to give a vitamin K injection, because remember, vitamin K is a clotting factor. And then the doctor will probably use this information to adjust the patient's dose. And then sometimes you take it and it's a little bit too low. It's not within that normal range that we expect. And what could that mean? That means your patient is at higher risk for having a blood clot. Most people are on this kind of medication because they have a history or a risk for having a blood clot. Maybe they've had a previous you know, stroke, heart attack, a DVT, things like that. Maybe they have AFib, atrial fibrillation. There's lots of reasons they could be on this therapy. But the big thing is we want to prevent them from having blood clots. That's the whole purpose. So we have to do these tests to make sure that we're in the correct range with our medications. So this was a quick one on PT INR. The big takeaways, how long does it take the blood to clot, and warfarin, warfarin, warfarin. Okay, that's what you need to know about the PT INR. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you in the next one.